Okay guys, so it's day two at Makassar Beach. Uh, we fished here yesterday and got a few hull in but a very, very shy bite. Uh, they didn't really commit to the bait. Uh, here and there we had better bites and we got them. So a few came out. Really nice. Today looks even better than yesterday. Yesterday was nice but a bit calm, water a bit warm so maybe that's the reason they were too aggressive in the bite like Ryan said. So we're going to try again today and see if we can get one of those big fatties there. They're nice and fat, the ones that's coming out. So I'm looking for a nice big size. Always, um, you know, there's some big ones swimming here. Always a chance for getting a PB. So that's the aim. And we hope we get that right. So yeah, I'm going to start with white muscle. There's no red bait on the beach yet. We don't see any might have some. Oh, he's still got from yesterday. I used all mine yesterday. So I'm going to start with the white muscle that I got from Takita. The packs of 12 or 10. They're quite big, it's actually quite nice. I'll show you. The nice big ones. And then you also get them in the packs of 50. And that's a great bait to have. Um, you always get a bite on it in a variety of fish, your cob, salmon, stem rust, and So it's a nice versatile bait to use. But sometimes, with all species, uh, the halyun fences can be very particular and uh, prefer only one bait uh, over others. The same with stem rust. Some days the blood worm will work better, other days white muscle, whatever they feel like I suppose, whatever is uh, abundant is another important thing to look at. Like when the red bait washes out like that, that's a food source in the water so naturally fish will be feeding on it. So if you rather pick that up, the, the red bait that's washed out and you use that, you should get better results. So let's see, um, the, these areas generally have a lot of other bait, like your the mussels they feed on, the normal mussels, the white mussel, the, the worms that's on the, the beaches here. So that's all baits that should work. But uh, like I said, if one of them are in abundance, like a stormy sea washes out some red bait, it's a bait that should work well. Let's get fishing. Look how big those are. Very nice. And then I use my little safari box. Now when you start getting older, you start getting clever. Instead of running up and down this small little dune after a day's fishing, you'll know about it. So, I'm putting this on, chucking my bait, button, and my scissors in there. You can bait up right by the water. So unless you break off, you don't really, or need extra bait, you don't have to come here. frozen bait early in the morning like this get a bite and they'll leave it <laughs> but a brain freeze now by doing this the way I'm fishing I'm fishing a joke a better chance of getting stuck but when they're eating very shy you can still strike them easier than uh, with a circle loop. But see by tying my bait and then putting it on, it's probably a habit from competition days. Um, position it nice and proud. The, the thing with that is, while I've got a bait in the water and I've had a few picks, I can already start making my new bait that will follow this one. And then when I reel in, it's quick, you just put on, so your water time's more. Now, yes, it's important for, for competition fishing, but even your social fishing. The more water time you've got, the better your chance of getting a fish, and that's just logic. Okay, there we go. First bait for the morning. Now, please kiss it, guys, and I'll give it a kiss. And let's wish this first bait of the morning. Gets a fish because that's great when your first cast with your first bait gets a fish. Oh, your day does can't get better. Fishing on the edge of a hole 
there's a rock and a ledge and I'm trying to get onto that spot which I saw yesterday and uh, you get stuck there a lot but I definitely got more bikes there. washing out with the sea being uh, up a bit over the days before and as the water gets low enough they manage to do uh, they manage to push this over the the lip here and then you just pick them up from the beach and still you know that's what your fish will be feeding on but I mentioned earlier uh, that's what's going around so good bait to have to fish with is what's around as we put some plate on the water. Get the half nice thing. It's a small one. Get my big fat old finger in there. Some of them you'll find is very, it's already mature and nasty. This one is very fresh, it's not matured yet. So let's try one here. Oh, you can see these. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a surprise, maybe. Careful, they'll squirt you properly. And uh, not the best taste for breakfast. But if you fish a lot, it's not too bad either. This one you can see has matured a little bit. This is the bait I'm going to put on now. Exactly that. You see it's going lighter. It's definitely matured a bit. So we'll be here. You also want to feel the ones that's hard. The, the shell has gone a bit softer. That will be nice bait. the ones that's really matured is when these housings go a bit softer. There we go. This one. Okay guys now this is you know when it goes see through silicone like this what they refer to as black bait. Can oh look there's one can be very good bait if you find this look at that one oh whoa that looks good goes, ooh, ooh, ah. goes almost see through he 
There's another one. Oh, look at that. Hey. Lovely. They sometimes go on the bottom of the bamboo as well. Guys, with fishing, some days these will work very, very well, and other days they won't. All you can do is try. A lovely one there. Let's put that away. Ha <laughs> ha! Let's see what else we've got here. Here's a mature one. Looks fairly mature. Let's see. That color, guys, it's nicely matured. Yep, another one. Okay. Oh, wow, gets me excited. Look at those nice full heads. saying that you do need a permit to even pick them up. Yes, they've washed out, they're dead, but you still, to collect it, you need a permit. You can take two liters a day. And have two liters in your possession. Now, is quite a lot. If I fill up this little hipster bait box of mine, that's about, ooh, help. Bowls, bowls. A rotten one. That, that's about a two liter box. To keep them whole. do it first. I'm going to use that little one. Small, but they can eat it. It's dry, but they can taste it. It's snotty, but it's lacquer. Hey guys, I'm going to start with this one. And they definitely are very keen to, to throw that one of those black baits see what it does for us. I like the heads all like this. Not breaking them up too much. There's enough smell coming out. Let's see. Okay, James. Small bait. Let's see if we can just get a, a fish. We haven't got a fish yet. Oh, it's pulling back. I'm gonna put this in the back there, but yo, you get stuck in the back there on this spot. It's a very small bait, actually. That's why those bigger heads, oh, they make a nice bait. Because uh, 
Oh, you won't stop eating, like Rian said, until the red bait's finished. With muscle, they leave the, the tougher part, and they'll stop eating your bait. But with the red bait, hey, they don't stop eating. It's like, scarp choppies and skull pikeys. Same thing. Took the took the line, uh, the rod went down, and the seagull flew into the line, and it got tangled, and we thought we lost. Well, the seagull came up, and then the other fish was still stuck. So yeah, we're very fortunate with this one. So yeah, Omian, um, mooi fish, man. Mooi fish, man. Yeah, so 45 centimeter. Very nice. Yeah. So legal size is 35. So you're allowed to keep two for the day. So we're just going to keep the one for the day. Really stunning fish. Look at that.
centimeters. They definitely not big. I will call you. Yeah, yeah, a little dumper. But they are such pretty fish. Our national fish. Don't get big. <laughs> It's a pity it's a 12 foot 6. So I was going to show you uh, yeah, the traditional way how to, to fill it and open up a gallion, specifically for the bride. So you're going to start at the tail, cut through to the head the bone, you work up all the way and go through the head. You're going to open it up like this. Alright, let's start. I can feel the backbone there, so just run the knife down the backbone. Go. Now you get the rib cage over there, so just go through it like that, just with a force. Okay, so that's what you want. Nice and clean. Here's your all your your uh, your backbones and other kraaikjes you The ribcage has been cut off clean. And inside you'll find the guts. You go through a bit lower. So now this is where you need a good knife. I thought it was gonna touch me. <laughs> now you need to go through the head. This is normally where you can lose a, a thumb. That will be a whole stomach cavity. That's a tongue over there. And if you look at the back of the throat, there's little molars there as well. Yeah. Okay. That's the kiva, there's your liver, and then the guts. There's a lot of the fish as well. And a muscle. So it's your first one, you have to eat that. No joke, joke, joke. <laughs> so, so. Okay, so like there's the liver, you can eat the liver, I do like the liver as well. Uh, there you go. 
I'm going to show you what this fish ate and I can feel by the stomach contents that it's full of little black muscle shells. That normally means that the hole has opened up just now. So look at all those little black muscle shells. It's actually quite big. Sure. So it's black muscles about that big that they will eat. And uh, yeah, they'll crush it like popcorn and that's it. Quite a bit of fat around these uh, organs as well. So I'm going to chuck this to the seagulls. Alright. Okay, now when you get to the, to the stomach part, what you do, you can take the, your finger, just work it underneath the gills. There's a tongue, pinch it off, stir it out like that. See us. One little over there. So I can leave the tongue in as well if I want to just wrap it up. The molar. Mafi bars it. Is it tan? Yeah. That's it. Okay, so now with the chali, so this is what you want. So nice and neat. You're gonna fry it. So you open this up slightly here. Okay. So it's gonna go in the grid like this. Okay. So the big reason why you want to keep this cavity intact is that okay, there's a lot of fat in this fish here but you can see there's a lot of fat underneath the skin as well so it's a really really nice fish. So all the fat's gonna, it's gonna be self basting basically so you're gonna put it on the grill first, skin side down, okay, meat side down, you're gonna brine a bit, turn it over with all the scales on and then just take your time flip it around regularly until you see the fat will start bubbling through the through the bones here and through the backbone and the head. Alright so and that's basically it. It's a beautiful fish. Stunning condition. Like I said there's a lot of fat underneath the skin as well. So yeah very very nice early season for you. That's it. Hope you guys enjoy it. Inside out. 
slip it to the bottom so you can keep the hook tight and dry. Hook part. Okay, you see the inside out? Wrap it up like you would wrap something for the woman you love most in the world, like a Christmas gift, a nice, nice you wrap it up. Ready your cat. We want to leave it like all of these uh, rockfish, we want to leave it fluffy in the bottom. You can put it a bit tighter, a bit more cotton on top. Thanks, sir.